this unit logarithms and exponents. Exponents you're probably familiar with. That word before you've used that probably since grade eight or, or earlier than that, but logarithms, the logarithm of a number, that's going to be something new for you. And we will look at that soon enough. Uh, some of the other applications on here, uh, exponential growth, something that, uh, how things grow exponentially if you're multiplying. We're going to look at situations like that. Uh, other things, Richter scale, earthquakes, loudness of sound are related to logarithm. So maybe maybe the title page is more meaningful later on in the unit. You can come back and try and figure out why is that picture on there. The first topic in here, the first concept, is one that you don't really need much in terms of grade 12 to solve. Uh, we're, if, if you looked through the, the titles of the, the units in here, there are, and this should be on the back of your title page, if you look through the titles here, there's two different places where we solve exponential equations. There's one, and there's another one. An exponential equation is one that has, I mean, it, what would your guess be as to what an exponential equation is? It's not a trick question. It's called an exponential equation because what does it probably have in it? An exponent, yeah, it has an exponent. But it's it. The key is that the that the variable is the exponent. All right. So if you look at the equations in that first, I know I'm flipping around here, but if you look at the equations that are here, the key is that the variable is the exponent, or the exponent is the variable. I mean, you could make an equation that says. 3x plus 2 equals 5 to the seventh. Well, it has an exponent, but that's not an exponential equation because the variable is not the exponent. This is just a linear equation because you could write out whatever that is. Okay, so the variable is the exponent. I don't know if you want to write that down on here somewhere. I would tend to, for these, some people like to put notes directly on this thing if we happen to be using this, but sometimes we'll just use blank, you know, I'll just use a blank page and you might want to use other paper. I'll leave it up to you how you want to do it if you want to put kind of the, the stuff we talk about together on separate paper or on here. You make that decision. Okay, an exponential equation is where the variable is the exponent or is includes the exponent, I guess is probably a more a better way of saying it. Now the first one we have here, this one you could probably just solve by looking at it once you understand what you know what an exponent is, which I assume you already do. Two to the x equals eight. What does x have to be here? It has to be three, right? In your mind, what are you what are you saying there? Here's you uh, thinking here. What are you thinking when you're when you're trying to solve that? You're thinking, hmm, what, what, what power do I need there on a two to make an eight, right? Well, you're, so you're probably thinking, two to the one, no, that's not it. Two to the two, no, that's not it. I, I know you probably don't go through this whole process. Two to the three, that's it. Here it is. Two to the three. What, so what you're, what you're doing is you're saying two to the x, well, that has to be two to the three, so x is three. How we're, one way you can solve exponential equations if you can do this, is to just think about what power it is, right? You're just you're making them the same base here. You're writing each side in terms of the same base. This is only going to work if the numbers involved are related. Could you uh, I'll, maybe a counterexample here is one that doesn't have related bases, like two to the x equals ten. Here's your thinking again. 2 to the 1, no, that's not it. 2 to the 2, that's not it. 2 to the 3, that's not it. Running out of thought space here. 2 to the 4, is that it? No. So I don't know where your thinking goes after that. 2 to the, what, like, what do we do? 2 to the 4, that's too big, right? 2 to the 3 is too small, so what do you think? 2 to the... I don't know if you realize you can do this, right? 2 to the 3.5. Who knows if that's it, right? We're not going to solve things like this that have unrelated bases. 
These are unrelated. And the reason they're unrelated is 2 and 10 are not powers of a, a common number, right? Whereas 2 and 8 are, right? So you don't have to copy down the, the thinking person here. If you want to solve this, which looks a little bit more complicated, probably you can't do it as simply as you did the first one. But you can apply the same idea here that if you could write them as powers using the same base, then you, all you have to do is say, well, the two exponents have to be equal. So this side is 2, is two, to, two to the 5x. This side is 8 to the x plus 1. What did we do with the 8 in the first one? The 8 you can think of as 2 to the power of 3, right? So I'm going to write it like that. So all I've changed is that 8 to 2 to the 3. That's the only change I made. Once you do that, then all you need is grade 9 exponent laws to simplify this. So you might have to think back to grade 9 here. It might This might not look like something you would have done in grade 9, but you did things like this, right? 2 to the 3rd to the 4th is the same as 2 to the power of 12. 12, absolutely, right? If you have a power of a power, you, you multiply those exponents, right? Because 2 to the 3rd to the 4th is 2 to the 3rd, 2 to the 3rd, 2 to the 3rd, 2 to the 3rd, right? So you got 2 to the 12th. So how can you write this side of that equation? This side I'm going to keep the same. But this side, I want to write it as 2 to the... If I have 2 to the 3rd to the x plus 1, up here you said multiply the, the exponents. So what is this going to be the same as? Yeah, 3x plus 3. Good, plus 3, right? Because you're you're multiplying out you're multiplying out this. 3 times x plus 1. Those are those are both exponents. 3 times x plus 1, 3x plus 3. Once you do that, then it's easy. Once you've written them as as uh, powers with the same base, then you're then you're okay, right? If 2 to the power of this is 2 to the power of this, then what must be true? Like the logic you're applying is if 2 to the a is equal to 2 to the b, what has to be true? A equals b, right? That's the logic you're using. So if 2 to the 5x is equal to 2 to the 3x plus 3, what has to be true? Yeah, 5x equals 3x plus 3. In that way, you've changed it from a an exponential equation. You've reduced it to a linear equation that you can solve, right? If 5x is 3x plus 3, then 2x is 3, and x is 3 halves, right, or 1.5. That's the, that's the concept for that first tutorial. Writing equations that involve equations that involve uh, exponents like that exponential equations the first thing you should try is see if you can write both sides with a common base this one you uh, you can look at and I know you guys have to go um, try all the rest of them on here now I've conveniently done the the two easiest ones you're gonna have to remember your other equation solving things like if you have this kind of a thing, 3 times 5x minus 2, you're probably going to have to deal with the 3 first. You can't multiply 3 times 5 because the x plus 2 doesn't apply to everything. So you're likely going to have to do this first, right, as a first step. So so think about the what you already know about equation solving. This one you're going to have to change both sides because one's not a power of the other. Here, 8's a power of 2, so I only had to change the right side. In this case over here, 8's not a power of 4, but they're both powers of what number? Of 2, right? 
So as long as you can identify what they're both powers of, then you can kind of proceed from there. All right?